back in the saddle. We are. Yeah, it is so weird to be recording not in a studio again. Like we haven't, when was the last time we recorded not in a studio? It's gonna be like eight months. Uh, we had one or two, I think. Patrick's was the last one. Oh yeah. I think it was in Jersey. Yeah, and that was in September. Yeah. November, December, January. Five months. I kind of miss Phil. He's oh yeah. My, he's my Valentine. <laughs> <laughs> How was your Valentine's Day? Uh, it was same as every Valentine's Day. We did nothing. We do nothing. Yeah, that's true. I know. It's weird. Like, we've never celebrated Valentine's Day except you are always, you always remember it. Like, even I, I forget it and I'm a girl and it's so odd. I don't know why. Like, you know, women are crazy about Valentine's Day. Like, that loved one better get them something. Yeah. And I, you are so, you know how lucky you have it with me? <laughs> no, I, I guess I, yeah, because I don't have to take you out to dinner. You're not big. No. You know, our family, though, it's like by the time the third kid was born, it's like from thanks we have Thanksgiving, we have Christmas, we have a kid birthday, another kid birthday, then we have your birthday. It's like by Valentine's Day, I'm tapped out. Yeah. Like I'm broke. And I'm pretty tired. <laughs> you are. <laughs> but I do have to say, you know, you've always been such a good... Um, like you remember, you're so, I, what, what's the word? I'm saying gift giver because but you don't really give gifts on Valentine's Day, but at least like you do, you'll bring a box of chocolate, um, but you're not like a big gift giver just because we just don't do that. No. But I remember like even back to the very first, um, like Parker, our first child, she was born the end of December and, and Valentine's Day, I, I, I was leaving for the airport. She was six weeks old basically to go visit my family. And in the car, you gave me a candle that you bought like at Ralph's. At on CVS. The, yes, it's like, the, yes, you went there to go get diapers. Classy. And you, <laughs> and you picked up a candle with a card and on the way to the airport, you handed it to me. It was- I don't remember that You made at me all. feel so bad. You made me feel so bad because I did not remember it was even Valentine's Day. I just had a like, had a baby six weeks ago, and you were like, "Happy Valentine's Day!" And I was like, "Oh, I was like, I felt more bad than I did happy." Nah. You do do that. You generally remember Valentine's Day before I do. But well, you this caught year, me this year. Yeah, I was just gonna say you caught me this year. I we did. were snowed in here in Connecticut. We'll get into that in some other episode, but uh, well, we should say where we are right now. Yeah, I hadn't gone anywhere. Uh, we are in Guilford, Connecticut. I think a lot of people who follow us on social media know that already, and. Uh, you know, we wanted to test this place out during winter because our blood is really thin after being in Southern California for a quarter of a century. So uh, we got a full taste of that and uh, we got dumped on by a nor'easter. Yeah, the day before Valentine's Day. So we were snowed in. So, yep. uh, yeah, but I did manage to get a card and two received peanut butter cups. And where are they? Because I wanted one of them. There's one in the refrigerator for you. Oh, thank you. I Happy Valentine's I'm... Day to me. Happy Valentine's Day to you. <laughs> and so this was the first year, I think, where you didn't get me anything. Yeah. A card. A card, because you normally get a card. Even, no, I didn't get you anything. Yeah. Because I hadn't left the house for 48 hours. And then uh, we were snowed in for two days. Yeah. So. Oh, happy Valentine's Day. Yeah, thanks. I'm keeping it classy as always. Yep. All right, so today we have the Perry, Georgia episode. Buckle up, let's roll. Check the mic and make sure it sound right, boy. Hey listeners, ever wonder what it would be like to blow up your comfort zone at the tender age of 50? Well, we did just that. When our last kid went off to college, we hit the road in search of a new hometown. Now we bounce from city to city and bring you along for the ride. This is the Skip Town All-Stars podcast. What's up, All-Stars? Welcome back. We are so excited to be coming to you from Guilford, Connecticut this week. We had a little adventure on the way up. You've already heard the Carolinas, those episodes. Uh, we are excited to bring you today Perry, Georgia. But first, if you're out there and you're listening to us on Spotify or Apple Podcasts, please give us a follow and a review. They mean the world to a little train that could like ours. And uh, if you're watching us on YouTube, please, won't you, as the kids say, smash that like button and subscribe to us. We also love your comments. Totally helps out our algorithm. Uh, it's been showing in the last several months. We're getting tons and tons of, uh, what do they call them? Inflictions? 
in impressions. impressions. Yes, we're getting tons and tons of impressions. <laughs> I don't want an affliction, okay? <laughs> <laughs> I don't want an affliction. So no. anyway, uh, make sure you do your job while we continue to bring you the best we possibly can and while we are doing ours on with the show. Anyway, that's your little public service announcement. <laughs> How, how'd I do? You did great. You hit. I think you hit everything. Did I? Yeah. That's the first time. Normally I have to do those in like four takes. Yeah, no, you did you great. Know, like Phil in the studio would be like rolling his eyes, falling asleep while I'm just trying to do like and subscribe messaging. Uh-huh. Funny. Yep. Oh my God. So anyway, uh, okay. So uh, we're in Guilford. Uh, the place we are staying has a few kitty cats lingering around. So Three to be exact. So yep. if you're watching this on YouTube, one or two may come into frame and they like to meow when we are talking. Yep. So we're going to hear a lot of meows, I'm sure. Or how about you're going to hear a lot of meows. And if you're watching, you're going to see a couple. That's Kitties. right. And you get to uh, play Where's Waldo every time you see one, take a drink. How's that? Oh, that's a good one. Little drinking game. Uh-huh. Okay. It's happy so, hour somewhere. Happy hour <laughs> somewhere. Okay, so we mentioned it at the top of the show, uh, how uh, I didn't really get you anything this year for Valentine's Day. But part of that reason mm -hmm. that I feel like I have to explain is... <laughs> Okay. Someone is not eating chocolate right now. Oh, yeah, no. Uh -uh. Someone is not eating sugar. Someone had a little meeting with her nutritionist. Are you going to gag? <coughs> I had to cough. Go That's ahead. That's cat hair. That's a fur ball. <laughs> that is for sure a fur ball. <laughs> so anyway, somebody had a little meeting with her nutritionist uh, about two weeks ago mm -hmm. and seemed like it was all going to be set up well. And then a week ago, you had another meeting and that one did not go so well. It did not. What's happening here? So I hired a nutritionist to help me because, um, you know, just as we're getting older, it's it's hard to uh, maintain the weight that I had prior to leaving L.A. And it's not honestly so much travel related as it is just age related. And because um, I eat the same every single day. I'm a creature of habit half a turkey sandwich at lunch, you know, I don't know, just the same th two eggs in the morning. So I couldn't figure out why things have not, like why the scale is going up and not staying steady. So I hired somebody to tell me why that was happening. And she did. She obviously linked it to my age and said, you know, even though my diet is exactly the same as it was five years ago or even two years ago, uh, my body has changed and I need to uh, change my diet because of that. So, you know, typical, add more protein, add more water, less fat, less carbs, that whole thing. I mean, I thought I had a pretty good, sensible diet. And, and she said I did, but I needed to just really track my proteins more. So I started it. And the first week was horrible. I mean, horrible. <laughs> so I Wait, what was the prescription, though? Like, what were the modifications? Okay, Let's start there. In the, in the nutritionist defense, she did write a plan for me. Uh, the carb intake was only like 40, between 40 and 50. Um, what this, I didn't see. This is Skip many. Town All-Stars okay, podcast. Well, well, how about this? Let me put it Considering in perspective. Considering like two slices of bread is probably what, 25 or 40 carbs or something like that? Uh, one tortilla is 20 carbs. Oh one tortilla. Lord. Wow. So um, an apple is 18 carbs. It's something crazy. And I'm a big fruit and vegetable person. So what I missed in her outline was the part where she said, I could eat as many vegetables as I want. I walked away from our meeting and was like, oh, 40 to 50 carbs, that's easy. Like, that's no big deal. Not realizing how much vegetable and fruit intake I have. All that to say, three days in, I, like never hitting my carb mark ever. And I started getting angry, like legitimately <laughs> angry. And um, I kept saying I was going to fire her. Yeah. <laughs> and like we had a meeting at the one week and I just like unleashed. I felt so bad for her. It was like a hunger unleash. That's really what it was. I was straight up starving. And um, and so we just we worked it out. She said I could have as much vegetables as I wanted. So that made a difference because if you don't have fruit and you don't have vegetables and that for me is 50 percent of my diet, what? Like, what do I eat? Like, I'm eating meat and chicken all the time, and I don't even like chicken. So, I mean, we went out to breakfast one day, and he asked me what I was going to have, and I got super sassy, and I said, nothing. That's what I'm going to have. There's nothing on here I can have. I'll have two eggs. That's it. And so, um, things are better, though. <laughs> things are better. <laughs> all because you can mix in a little more. Wait, you don't even like zucchini, or I'm trying to think of, like... 
I hate the it. more filling vegetables are like. Can, can you eat... have yams? You can't have yams. Oh heck no! That's too much sugar. It's too much starch. Can you sugar. have regular potatoes? I cannot have potatoes. You, Brussels sprouts? Yes. Are those high in carbs? Um, she said not to worry about vegetable carbs except for starchy carbs. News flash, everyone! Nobody ever got fat eating Brussels sprouts. No. Okay. And, so and... I have like okay. Let's be honest here. How much weight have you lost from my diet? <laughs> I didn't really want to get into it. Oh, you know, I when in my meeting with her a week after, I was so sassy, and I said to her at one point, "My husband's lost more weight than I have on my diet, so th this isn't working." It, it it's true, maybe, <laughs> but there are factors that go into that. I want to kick you right now. I like, know. My foot is so, so close sorry. to your leg. I want to I'm kick so you sorry. right now. Okay. But I did, I did even the scales a little bit with you by drinking like a fish with Patrick the other day. Yeah, our so, friend Patrick came to visit us while we were in Connecticut and they had at it. We did have at it. It was a great day. It was as if we were in college again, Ugh. except the next day, there was no bounce back factor. It was pretty <laughs> harsh. <laughs> so uh, yeah. anyway, all that to say, I consumed a lot of calories that day and it was all alcohol, sugar, right? Yeah. Uh, but other than that, I haven't been snacking at all. <laughs> or if I have been snacking, it's been like carrots. And, because we we arrived here in Guilford, mm -hmm. and you started this thing like a day or two later, oh, right? The two next days day, later. The next day. Yeah. We got and here. So, yeah, the next day, literally. Yeah. And so uh, we hadn't even gone grocery shopping at that point. So when we went, it was all like Healthy you know, stuff. carrots and celery and, and uh, cherry tomatoes. And, and we did not even walk down the chip aisle. And I'm a sucker for everybody who, who listens knows pretzels. I like the salty snacks, the chips, the crackers, the, the pretzels, the popcorn. Yeah. So, so like a couple days in, um, she gives me uh, a recipe for, you know, a fake chip dip. It's really just Greek yogurt mixed with either taco seasoning or the ranch, um, you know, Hidden Valley Ranch um, uh, powder to make chip dip. But their chip dip is with mayonnaise and sour cream. And so this chip dip did have the Hidden Valley Ranch seasonings, but just was Greek yogurt. So I made a little veggie platter for James and I brought it to him with the Greek yogurt and some carrots and cucumbers mm -hmm. and peppers into his office while he was working. And he, he, I'm in the other room and he's, I know he's taken a couple bites and he's like, this isn't chip dip. <laughs> <laughs> it's true it wasn't chip no, dip it was not so it's the non-chip it's the worst chip dip I've ever had <laughs> it just tastes like yogurt and spice I actually think it's good I mean considering like what it is it's, it's better than eating raw vegetables that is true yeah. yeah and you know less calories than the regular chip dip but yeah. whatever okay fine so I'm better though I'm better Okay, good. You've lost weight and my, my... I know. You've lost weight and... I didn't directly answer your question as to how many pounds I've lost. I don't want to tell you. I know, so it's awful. You're just going to get angry. I, I've, lost I, but, I've lost none. But none. among the other factors are, uh, I'm probably two and a half times the size of you. <laughs> and when I go, like when I do a workout and I wear the little monitor and everything, it, I, I will see other people in my workout class and they'll be burning 600, 700, 800 calories like a bad day for me is 900 calories. Like oh. I will easily burn 1100 if I really get after it in class. So, you know, it's like, I just work out so I can eat more. That's just like, I'm the, that's the person I am. So You know what? You're going to do the Zoom with Rebecca next week. I am. <laughs> I'm going to do it. I don't mind the food at all. I just, I do have moments in the day where I'm like, oh man, a little bag of pretzels would go really good right now. And so I can't do that. That said, I would never dip my pretzels into that chip dip. Right. So not very good. Okay. Yeah. Well, I won't make any for you. It's fine. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure I'll, I'll lose even more weight then. Uh -huh. <laughs> so anyway, all right. Well, I just wanted to bring that up in case you got cranky with me in the middle of this thing. Oh, I'm sure. I'm still hungry right now. <laughs> but you seem to be in a better mood because then you guys had a different powwow. We did. She let you eat more vegetables. Uh-huh. It's and all good. What? And so you guys are good. Yeah. I you mean, hugged I still, it out with her. Yeah. I haven't lost any weight. I still can't button my jeans. It's all like going to hell in a handbasket, but at least I'm not as hungry. How's that sound? Mm -hmm. You thought you were going to tell her what was up that day. I did. And what happened? And it didn't happen. No, she didn't budge. <laughs> she did not. She budge. said the math doesn't change lady. <laughs> <laughs> and I still can't button my jeans, yeah. but I, you know like, what? We're not adding any more tortillas. Yeah, it's fine. I mean, whatever. It's all for. It's all better eating, you know. And yeah. I'm not a big junk food person anyway, but I am a burger and French fry person. So 
an apasta person. Yeah, you love for sure. Italian food. I do. Yeah. But you you do you consume a lot of macros every day. I do. Yeah. Um, so the fact that I've gained, I literally, you guys, like since a year and a half, I've gained 20 pounds, which I know, like some people are like, okay, who cares? I've gained more or whatever. But you know, like when you're, it's four sizes, you guys, it's legitimately four sizes more than if it's in my closet. So I, I can't change my whole wardrobe. You know what I mean? You just put on weight because you're drinking water now. You've been dehydrated since you were like 26 years <laughs> old what you and you just don't even know it. Yeah. <laughs> no. I'm I've seen her drink exactly two glasses of water <laughs> our entire life. marriage. Yes. <laughs> it's true. I know. My friend Kat did call me a camel. <laughs> <laughs> She's like, do you ever go to the bathroom? I'm like, I do. <laughs> <laughs> so crazy. Anyway, all right, all right, let's get into Perry, Georgia. Yeah, let's get into Perry, Georgia. What do you got? You want to start off? I do want to start off. Okay, okay, so I really, this town is so fascinating to me for so many different reasons. And mm -hmm. the first one I'm going to talk about is the size of it. So Perry, Georgia, and I know you probably, you, you always bring stats. So my guess is you have stats on population. I do. And all I'll that. drag them out yeah, a bit. But Perry, Georgia itself, like the downtown area, is really small. So it looks, if you look it up even in photos, you'll see it's like this cute little charming town, which made us want to go. And I read about it before we hit the road and thought, oh, this would be a great place to visit. Um, it's only like four, maybe four blocks big, you know, long, however you want to call it. Uh, so you kind of feel like I'm not gonna lie, you kind of feel like it's this little southern podunk town. <laughs> and then you are completely schooled the minute you walk into any shop because the prices are so high. It's like the craziest thing. We there's one shoe store uh, that we that we went into, and the shoes started at how much were the shoes that oh they my God. started? I bought a pair of shoes there. Uh, I, we went in there looking for shoes for me. And we did. I bought a pair of shoes there. I, I'm a dude, so I normally don't spend over a hundred bucks for shoes. If that. Oh, that's a if lot I'm for on, you. If I'm on my own, I'll spend 70 okay, or 80. Let's just be clear. You are a DSW fan. For the longest time. Yes. Okay. Yeah. So you went in kind and of dropped out of that, but how much money there? Uh, mine were $165, something uh -huh. like that. Yeah. yeah. And, uh, and they're great. They, I've gotten at least five compliments on my shoes from men and women. Those were the cheapest shoes in the store because they it went from were. 165 to 500. Uh, in this little town in Perry, Georgia, uh, was a shoe store that basically, if you averaged out, the shoes started at $200, okay? So if that wasn't enough, I, I was like, okay, like, wh where is this, sh like, who's buying these shoes here, right? I go into another store just like around the corner that was this little clothing store. Everything was from Paris. Like it legitimately, everything was from Paris. The clothes started, like a little shirt started at $125 and there was a purse there for $2,300. It was a silk purse. It wasn't like a Gucci or a Louis Vuitton. It was from Italy. And it was a handmade silk purse for $2,300. So I was like, I really felt like I was in the Twilight Zone. So I had to ask somebody, like the girl in the French store. I was like, wait, who's buying this? Uh -huh. Like, I legitimately need to know who is buying these goods. And um, she wasn't the only person. I mean, she was the first person, but she wasn't the only person. Because I went into a couple different stores. Yeah. I went to a baby's clothing store. Baby's clothing store, right? The socks... Unless I'm like, because it's been so long since I've had a baby, because I'm like, baby it's, little... It's been a long time since you've had I a baby. I know, but little booty socks are this big. Okay, right. if you're looking on, you know, look, if you're looking on YouTube, you know Everybody they're tiny. Everybody knows what a baby's okay. foot looks like. Yeah. It started at like $15. <laughs> $15 for a booty? No, 15 For one booty? Yeah, no, for the pair. Oh, But okay. that's a lot. So you get like, both booties. You do get both booties <laughs> okay. for 15 But like, those should be like $3. You know what I mean? Oh. So um, what I found out was that there are like three families that, you know, their their revenue in that town is pecan and peaches. And there are three major families that are generational. And seriously, those three families like keep that town in business. And then what somebody also told me there was that <clears throat> because they want people to open up business in the downtown area mm -hmm. and they want businesses to stay, yeah. those families that own most of that area 
uh, don't charge much for rent. And in some cases, there are people that aren't even paying rent. Like there was a restaurant that wasn't open because it was a Monday, I think. And um, the one of the girls had said to me, they don't even pay rent from what rumor has it, but it's because they want them to still have that type of restaurant. It was like a crepe shop or something. It was completely, you know. There still has to be something there. Yeah, it was a specialty store. And Otherwise, it, it looks like a ghost town. Yes. Yeah. So um, kind of reminded me of Laurel, Mississippi, in our travels, how the town of Laurel, you know, gathered together, put their funds together to yep. revitalize it. So this, the, the, these three families, obviously, are doing that. I don't know to the extent of, like, you know, how much they have invested, but uh, I was like, Three families can keep all this going. Obviously, it's more than three. James and I went and visited. I mean, you know, they're right near the freeway. This little town of Perry is right off of, what freeway is that? Is it the 75? Uh, it's what is a 75, it? yeah. It's crazy. Like, you literally get off, you get off the, the off-ramp, and you drive a mile, and you're in downtown Perry. Um, so that was the first thing I thought that was really fascinating about that downtown, not to mention... There's just like three or f there's three major restaurants that everyone says to go to. And then there's like some sports bars and there's coffee shops. <laughs> we went to two out of three and they were delicious, like five star all the way. Swanson's. OK, so here's what's crazy. Swanson's was really fantastic. The dinner, um, the restaurant I went to in the evening, it was not cheap. Like I looked it up. It was a steak place. And it was, again, right downtown. It Orleans. Was Yes, thank you. I was just about to say that. And it wasn't just steak. It was obviously uh, Cajun style, but it was hefty on the steaks and, and lobster and stuff like that. So I'm thinking we're in the middle of Georgia, right? Like, like okay, so this is going to be your basic southern place. First of all, the meals started at like $35 and there were families there. Oh, yeah. Like, like families. The place was packed. It, kids. The wine list, extensive college kids with their parents with shorts and flip-flops on in the middle of winter like just having nothing but time and i'm like who are these little brats like yeah, it wasn't like shorts and it was like the uh stylish shorts and flip-flops that the kids wear you know the 200 dollars sweats that's it yeah it was exactly it wasn't that. like people no, no. showing up in russell athletics oh no to it be was clear. it thank you for clarifying that because yeah. there's these little college kids wearing like Exactly, 200 like UGG slippers or UGG flip flop, whatever. Oh, yeah. It was like, well, what? I was, I could not. That was Perry Georgia's experience. <laughs> I'm yeah. not kidding. Every, yeah, every, the kids were dripping in five bills alone, just yeah. each each kid, you know. But what was weird is you didn't see when you see an influx of money like that in uh, a, an area like the shopkeepers or restaurants with high prices. Usually it is also representative in the cars. You know, you'll see Mercedes, you'll see Range Rovers, you'll see, um, you know, just more expensive yeah. automobiles. That kind of wasn't the case, though. There wasn't a lot of... There were some killer trucks. There were some really, really nice trucks. Okay, see, I wouldn't even notice that. Yeah. Okay, yeah. so were I there mean, like $100,000 trucks? Like freshly washed, polished, all that. Like, uh, oh. I'm sure there are a couple $100,000 trucks that we saw. Most of them in the 70 and up, 65 and up crowd. Yeah, yeah it was crazy. So I, my, my friend Chandra, who listens to the show, she's from Macon, Georgia. So she was telling me, oh my gosh, you're right in her Macon, blah, blah, blah. And I said to her, she knew, she knew of Perry. And I, I was like texting her like, Chan, like this is insane. Yeah. These prices, like who the heck lives here? So my mission was to find these pecan and peach estates that are, you know, that have these beautiful farms. They're not too hard to find. They're a little hard to find in the winter. Oh, they were hard to find, yeah. let's be honest. Like, But they're all around you. They were, because I was like, okay, I need to see this. Like, the, yeah. this is the biggest influx of money. I need to see it. So let's go. And yeah. we did go to, actually, we went to one orchard, which is a peach orchard. That Lane Orchard. Yep. Lane's Orchard. Yep. Let's call it that. That's what it was. Yeah. And we bought quite a bit of stuff. Like we did. We, we bought, they're, they're obviously known for their peaches. and But they also had um, boiled peanuts there they, did. they, they have like pecans had... which we forgot to buy they yeah. have an entire store they have an orchard they have a store and then they have an entire like little restaurant over they on do. the side and you can get their peach cobbler it, i mean look um we got canned peaches we got peach cobbler i was like this, this is was the... all pre-nutritionist 
Oh yeah, one hundred percent. I went crazy because I had a fried. I'm not a big peach person. Oh, but I had a fried peach pie because I've never had one before in my life. I, I was thinking about while we we're there it's something about Georgia uh, because in if you remember in the Savannah episodes, I was pounding fried food, especially fried fish, and that's when I like. I got COVID, I got all these like health <laughs> the issues. Gout. I had the gout, I did. I had like pancreatitis. And so uh, whatever, it was like, I was a wreck when we got back to our little house and like, we're just like shaking off our travels. I mean, it took me like two months to get back in shape. And uh, like shape, when I say shape, I mean just walking to get coffee in the morning. Uh, and so uh, so as I was devouring this peach pie in the middle of Perry, Georgia, I'm like, uh -huh. It's been so long since, I, like, fried food had historically never been part of my diet. Like, you the, you know me, and sure, like, I can throw some food down just as much as the next guy. But you know, whenever we've gone into a restaurant, historically, I have not chosen the fried dish. Hardly ever. No, you're never, you've never been the fried mozzarella sticks or the chicken mm -mm. tenders. I'm like black and grouper, black and this, you black are. and that. So... Uh, so anyway, I'm fried. like, here I am in Georgia again, pounding fried food. So how was it? Uh, it was, I mean, it was fine. It was good. I'm again, I don't like peaches that much. So oh, my peach um, cobbler was so good. It was everything they said it was going to be. I had a bite of that. It was good. It was okay. Oh, it was I delicious. just, I have an aversion to peaches. I like nectarines, but for me, there's a texture issue with the peaches. It just when you're biting into it, it feels like you're biting into a little mammal or something oh, to me. Oh, you know, don't not like, ruin this for me. I well, like it's a little peaches. furry. I, where would you? No, stop. Right I now like I have it. to erase that. How am I ever going to get like that nectarines. out of my head? Oh, my so, God. I don't know. I have texture what issues the heck? when it comes to food. But I, don't have, I don't have many issues with food, but texture is one of them. So uh, Anyway, I was just happy to go to a real peach farm. It was a little... Really it was honest awesome. to goodness peach farm. It was so cool. No peaches because it was cold, but they yep. obviously canned them and we, we and we bought quite a few. <laughs> we did. We bought gifts for other people and we, we ended did. up eating half of them. So uh, we did not, as I said though, buy the pecans. I just I thought you had thrown them in the bag. I know. I just so silly. Neither one of us picked them up, so we could have had actual Georgia pecans, and we we missed the boat on that. Yeah, so um, it's probably better. I would have eaten the whole bag. So. Oh, all right. Well, I'm glad we didn't do it. Uh, you know what I did take a video of is how you open up a pecan because I never knew the shell of what a shell of a pecan looks like because when I get it at the store, it's already shelled. So um, I actually yeah. have a video and I'm going to put it on one of my shorts of how to open up a pecan. Uh, they had a pecan smasher there, which I'm sure is the same for a walnut smasher, but um, it was fun. It was just something to do. You know, it's cool. We walked in, it was right there. So I was like, I'm game. Let's do it. Yeah, it was fun. So uh, another thing that I found fascinating about Perry, Georgia, was that um, we stayed, first of all, let me just say, we stayed at this really cool- Oh yeah, we stayed. Okay, at a, okay I know it's gonna sound like an oxymoron, but it was a really cool Holiday Inn. We did. Um, the, the decor was literally straight out of, I would say, Texas, not Georgia. It was all Southern cowboy stuff. And I, I couldn't, it was very kitschy, and cute and just I think on the travel blogs they would call it bespoke, hun. It oh. was a it was a very bespoke holiday inn. Oh, is that what it is? I read a little. Oh, okay. Go on, proceed. So uh so this bespoke holiday inn was um right off the freeway, which was really a bummer because um where our room faced <laughs> was the freeway. Was the freeway. <laughs> and it was quite of, loud. We had a view of the 75. Yeah, that is definitely um oh, I would say go to this Holiday Inn, but do not get a room that faces the 75. In any case, it was adorable. And, you know, everyone that works there is from there. Yeah. So they're very happy to tell you about their town and where you should go and where you should visit. And one, one piece of information we got, and we had to see it with our own eyes, was that um, Jack Link's Beef Jerky oh, yeah. <laughs> is building a huge, like, like, like a factory there. Factory. That's the word. Because it yeah. wasn't a distribution. They're literally building a factory. Yeah. And they're taking up acres. I mean, acres. So when this gentleman who's working behind the desk is telling us this and how much it's going to, you know, help the economy there because it's going to, you know, lend itself to more jobs. Um, 
obviously like, you know, just the real estate alone, like yeah. buying that property. And I just kept thinking, who eats that much beef jerky that they had to, uh, yes, I see you. That would be me. I'm raising my hand yeah. for those of you listening. I really, I was like, really? Beef jerky is awesome. Okay, so we go, it's, when I say acres with an S, how big do you think that the purchase oh, of- I can't, I don't even want to guess. I have no idea. Do you know how They're much clearing money... land and putting Okay, hold on. Can we just talk about this for a second? How much beef jerky do you have to sell in order to just, first of all, buy the land that they bought? Because we're talking, I'm going to guess, <laughs> I'm going to guess. This is going to be good. Well, if the little square in Guilford is 20 acres, I'm going to guess it had to be 100 acres they purchased. Okay, sure. Okay, and they're building. Okay, beef jerky is how much a package? Uh, it's about $9 to $12, I think, so, uh, for a normal size package. So if let's just say- you get the bonus say, family package, like probably 22 bucks or something like that. Let's just say this new facility, 20 million? No, oh, I mean, yeah, probably at least. Beef jerky is ten dollars a package. Like I just I can't wrap my head around it. Like really? Like, like really? Like yeah. That much beef jerky? Yeah. Whew. Have you you were not you did not do the shopping in Los Angeles pre pandemic. I was the one who went to the store when everybody was like raiding Ralph's, the grocery store, and all the beef jerky was gone. All of it what? Gone. All the beef jerky was gone. I mean, all of every many thing, many weird things were gone. I had, I saw a lady carrying like five racks of Gatorade on her shopping cart. Like yeah. she had them straddling the rails of her car. I was like, I'm not sure Gatorade is going to get you through this pandemic. But Obviously, at that time, we didn't know what we didn't know. But uh, the point being, uh, beef jerky was the first to go. Oh, so beef jerky is going to get people through the well, pandemic. Because it's, it's salted. It's not going to go bad. And, you know, it's protein. So has a lot of preservatives, a lot of sodium, a lot of all that so, other stuff, but. So Gatorade is not gonna get you through the pandemic, but beef jerky will. I believe so. Huh? I, I would have chosen the beef jerky as huh. well. In fact, that's why I went over to the beef jerky aisles. So uh, did not go to the Gatorade aisle. So fun fact, yeah, yeah fun I mean, fact. any sporting event and any kids, soccer clubs, hockey club, like every, like somebody pulls out a bag of beef jerky, it is gone in a minute like kids I'm love sorry it. I don't I just I mean I think Slim Jim when I think beef jerky yeah. and that was like when I was in fourth grade Slim Jims are good it's weird so anyway snap into a Slim Jim so who would have thought Perry Georgia the mecca of beef jerky Jack Links it's about to be the new yeah, yeah. yeah. so create a lot of jobs there it's going to create a lot of jobs yeah. so anyway all right enough about we're back on food again we are we've only talked about food so far in perry georgia get your food on when you go to <laughs> when you go to uh geographically real point real quick we should say this is about what 45 minutes an hour at the most south of macon georgia mm -hmm. right very okay. close so a lot of people who work in macon for whatever reason uh choose to live outside and uh, obviously your house is more affordable in Perry, although as you will find later, when I break out my stats, yeah. that's all about to change. Um, but in addition to that, there's less crime. Did you know that in 2016, there was a murder in Perry? It was the first time there was a murder in over a decade. Well, there has to be murder. Every place has a murder, so it's gonna happen eventually. I know, but my point is there have been two murder. Well, I think it, there have been a few more recently in the past year or two but for a 20-year span there were two murders so that's a pretty good track record for a town that's an amazing track record yeah. it just makes me think automatically like is there are there police officers good enough to fill out figure out who committed the crime like when there's there no crime according to the news articles i read yeah they figured like they are they made arrests in both cases oh, okay yeah so I either, think like if you're not like if you're not using it you lose it that sort of thing so like if there's maybe. no crime you get a little lazy get a little lax. i mean maybe the figures are so low because you know people who live in perry the perryites perryans maybe they're just really good at hiding the bodies i'm not sure i don't know there's always this conversation about if you live in a town that has no crime 
the murder that will happen will be like the most gruesome. Oh, the most horrific. Yeah, yeah I know. It's and frightening. there was a case. I mean, one of the murders that I read about was actually a teenager. It's pretty horrific. And I don't want to get into nope. it on this show because I actually love Perry. I thought it was a great <laughs> little town. And I don't want to like. No. <laughs> yeah. You already, ruined, you already ruined peaches for me. I know. Not ruined Perry. I know. Sorry. Um, okay. So what next? Uh, well, I, I, I thought, you know what? One thing I did notice when we were driving up to Perry, basically, like we were just on the outskirts. Um, I thought it was just, uh, it was so refreshing. And you even made a comment about it when we were driving and how we saw four kids playing outside. Oh yeah, that's right. We saw kids in a yard, in an actual yard. In oh. 2024, we saw children playing. We sound so old when we say this. It was like an endangered species, I saw. Yeah. I, I couldn't believe it. I, I pointed, I mean, we look like weirdos. I pointed, I was like, oh! Look at that. Have, yep. you, have you seen that? When was the last time you saw that? I know. It was and, like we were looking at animals in a zoo. Yep. Yep. Yeah. And there were four kids in a yard running around playing. And they were like, my guess was eight or nine. And they were happy. Yes. They were all smiling. And then literally hours later, it had to be maybe four or five hours later, we're driving through Perry. And there were two teenage girls sitting on their front porch of their really pretty house. Now, they did have a phone in their hand. And they were looking. There was Naturally. one phone in their boat. Yes. But they were outside. I was like, what are they doing out? It was the oddest thing. Yeah. And it just, you know, it made me think about <clears throat> when Instagram like took over our family. Right. And I mean that <laughs> it nearly destroyed our family. One hundred percent. It started with Parker. And yep. I'll never forget the day. I mean, it was like yesterday, she was in sixth grade. Mm -hmm. And she came to me and said, Can I be, can I have an Instagram? And I didn't even know what it was. Um, I remember I felt like sixth grade was way too young to have a Facebook. So she didn't even bother to ask. And I, I asked her, what's Instagram? And she said, it's a photo sharing app where you just post photos. And she, um, she showed me, um, I don't know how, cause she didn't actually have the app. So I think she maybe pulled it up from a website or something. I don't remember cause she wanted permission. And I thought, well, what kind of photos are you going to share? Like, I just remember thinking, like, this is weird. And she said, just, like, friends and, like, my family. And it was awful, like, yeah, honestly. Cut to two years later, her entire class, like, all the girls are in uh, scantily clad bikinis and, like, looking like they're 22 years old. Yeah, and they're when in eighth they're grade. Like, yeah, in eighth 14, grade. 15. It was really whatever. horrible. It literally destroyed, I feel like it destroyed so many years of our daughter's lives. But in all of that to say... It's interesting because now all of our daughters are adults. And I don't know if you have had this discussion with your kids who are adults, but they have made it very clear to us when we are out how um, disgusted they are with millennials. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> our kids are Gen Z. The Gen Z. Yeah, how disgusted they are with millennials who let their kids have phones at the restaurant tables, the dinner tables. I, when I look at them, it is the craziest thing. And they will go on about how when they have children, their kids will not have a phone. And if they have a phone, it won't be until they're 16 and blah, blah, blah. And I'm like, oh my God, it has come full circle. Yeah, well, number one, that's hypocritical. And number two, uh, it's funny that the Gen Z, nobody is safe from the Gen Zs. It's nice to see the millennials getting a little hate from them because they rain it down on, especially boomers, but also Gen Xers. So. It's kind of nice to, you know, now they're like, they're focusing uh, their ire somewhere yeah, else. Yeah, exactly. I didn't realize, them. I thought only uh, the older generations picked on millennials, but guess not. Oh no, Gen Z is going after no. them as well. Yeah, um, I did, you do say it's hypocritical and I laugh at that comment because I don't know if, is hypocritical the word? like. I'm like, yeah, I mean, they're talking about kids who were ha on their phones at the dinner table. Maybe we wouldn't let our kids on the phone at the dinner table or like while we're out oh. at a restaurant eating. But there would come a point when like the adults were talking and the kids would just natu right. naturally start looking at each other's Instagrams or I also whatever. think that like it is very hard. I mean, I mean, I can't I literally cannot wait for our daughters to have kids so I can just be like, oh, told you so. I, I don't like to do those told you so. I can wait. I'm good. I don't need great kids anytime look, soon. <laughs> I would, I, yes, I agree with you on that. I'm, I'm not saying that. That's not ex what I'm saying. I'm just saying when they have kids, the whole, I told oh, you yeah. so will be a great moment. Even, mm -hmm. and I, I'm not the person, I don't, I don't do that with my friends. I don't do that with my family, 
cannot wait to do that. Cannot wait to do that. Um, I get it. I yeah. get it. Um, they just, you know, we were unfortunate as a generation because we didn't know what was coming. We had absolutely no idea what what allowing Instagram into our lives, our families. Oh, yeah, with our oldest daughter, we didn't see what was coming. No way. It's horrible. It wasn't until like we were standing against a you know a tsunami uh, that we were you know trying to challenge it with a yeah. little sand bucket. It was. It, I mean, it was just with like a little sand bucket. The floodgates so right. were so open and. Yeah. It had been let out. It was Pandora's box, not just for us, but for so many families. Yeah. And, uh, so now when you see kids outside running around, like playing, you're like, yeah, what is that? It's like seeing Sasquatch. Absolutely. So, yeah. So anyway, so kids in Perry, Georgia, they enjoy the great outdoors. We like it. So, all right. You ready for stats? Or you got I something am. Else? No, I'm great. So all right, let's, let's do stats. I uh, actually have a couple, I think, that are going to refute what your lady in town told you uh, about I'm, it, while it may be true that there are only a handful of families, um, you know, uh, propping up the place for the longest time, yeah. times have changed. All so, right. and the only thing I can say to their credit is whatever they did to keep it a great little community is working because a lot of people from Macon, like I said earlier, or uh, Warner Robbins, we'll talk about in a second. Yeah. Because uh, we visited all the areas around We did. Perry. Marshallville, a couple other places. Yep. So yep. Um, uh, some nice little towns. In my view, the nicest being Perry. Um, and, uh, you know, a lot of people are sort of tired of living in a congested area, a lot of stoplights, all that other stuff. Uh, so, there you is know, Perry's attractive. There is something funny about asking a local <clears throat> what their traffic really means. Because <laughs> when they say, True. I don't want to be in traffic anymore. So we met this gentleman who lives in Macon and is moving to Perry because he doesn't want to be in traffic anymore. And, it, you know, it's all relative. How about that? Okay, here we go. Perry is the county seat of Houston County, Georgia, with a population of 22,000 as of the 2020 census. Uh, in 2010, it was only 13,000 people. So in the last 14 years, it has more than doubled in size. Wow. Projections are by the time it is 2025 to 2027, that figure is going to be from 22,000 up to 28,000. So, which what, is another sizable jump. What do you think the draw is? Uh, I think a lot more industries have opened around there. Beef jerky mm -hmm. being one of them. Uh, Purdue Chicken is one of the greatest employers there. People working on chicken farms or food processing mm -hmm. uh, plants. Uh, Frito-Lay, don't forget, we went past the, the, the uh, Frito-Lay processing plant. Uh, Houston County Board of Education, Board of Commissioners, it is the county seat, so you're always going to have some governmental jobs in that area, That's local true. government. Um, there's a graphic packaging company. They make paperboard. That they hire somewhere around, I think, four or 500 people. So uh, I'm Perry Hospital. Um, the uh, racial makeup of Perry is almost 50-50 black and white. So 47% white, 47% African-American, the rest being Hispanic, Latino, 1% Asian. Although there are some outlying areas, just we're talking that's like Perry proper. But if you go to the outside outlying areas, there's a lot more uh, of the uh, Hispanic um uh, demographic representing in different in different little pockets. It probably has to do with the fact that a lot of them work on the farms. That's my guess. Yeah, absolutely. They're farm hands, maybe seasonal workers. Yeah. Dare I say, maybe migrant workers. So, or people that have you know come there for jobs and are looking to uh, start a new life in the United States. Uh, I'll leave that whole discussion. <laughs> yeah, we're not going there. I'll leave that whole discussion <laughs> up to Purdue, Purdue Farms and Frito Lay and all the and, and all the peach and pecan uh, orchards that hire these people. I'll leave that up to them. So, but you know, the bottom line is like there are a lot of people where it's like working on an orchard is beneath them. Oh yeah, for so, sure. You know, uh, let's just keep it real. Uh, anyway, moving on. As a as of December twenty twenty. Two, median listing for a home in Perry is around 220, I'm sorry, $250,000, uh, up 10% over the previous year. So from 2021 wow. to 2022, uh, everything spiked by at least 25K. 
Okay. So, and that's, I think that's like a two, it's probably, maybe it's a three plus two, probably a two plus one, a basic home like rancher style. Uh, that's not going to get you obviously two floors and four bedrooms and all that. Uh, Houston County has seen steady home price and value appreciation over the last decade. So even pre-pandemic, uh, I think some of these plants have opened up and, uh, a lot of people have, you know, found jobs there yeah. and started lives. Uh, speaking of which, uh, I think it was, it was it their softball team. They had painted all over the windows oh my gosh. in the downtown. Okay. So it was really, really cute. It was football. Oh, was it football? Yeah. It was oh, yeah, football. it was. They were like state champs yes. or something, right? So um, they sell it like, you know, <clears throat> like a small town. You would you would assume that when their high school football team is uh, state champs, they're going to have it everywhere in their little downtown area. And Perry did. It was they had they had writing on every single storefront about how their a high school team was a state champs. They had yep. pick, like painted footballs. Oh, my gosh. It was the cutest. And that calligraphy was nice. It the wasn't just like somebody, <laughs> like it was the same person who painted all the buildings. You are absolutely right. I can't Remember believe that? you even noticed that. How uniform that. it was. It was all uniform, whether it was on the bakery or the shoe store or the, um, or the you know, the, yeah. um, the sports bar. It was the yeah. same colors, same writing. You're so right. Yeah. Oh my gosh. I it can't. seemed a little Disney in that way, but that's fine. I respect the fact that they won this national or this was a, state title. Was it the Cougars? I think it was. Yeah. yeah. Uh huh. Yeah. Perry Cougars. Okay. So, uh, as a 19, sorry, a 2019 feature article referred to a restaurant boom in historic downtown Perry with at least 15 din dining establishments reportedly adding to the mix. Okay. So, literally, I said there was four because that's all I saw. Well, you said there were four blocks. I said there, there were three four. restaurants that everybody tells you to go to. There are actually four now. Yeah. Um, the Swanson we went to, the Orleans. And then there's one called the Oil Lamp that we did not get right. to, but it appears on every one of their lists. Uh -huh. And another place called the Perfect Pair. Other notables are the Muse Theater is under expansion. One couple there owns a few small businesses, including a newer butcher shop. <gasps> okay, that? I think that's really cool. Like when you go into a small town and there's a butcher shop there, it just even makes it feel more quaint. And we have, we are starting to see that more and more, honestly. Like since yeah. we left Los Angeles, we're seeing old fashioned butcher shops in little towns. So I don't know if that's a thing now. Like we saw it in Asheville. We yeah. saw it in Greenville. Yeah. We, we see it here in Guilford. Like what is that with butcher shops coming back into style? Uh, I think people want higher quality meat than what they can find in a lot of the national grocery chains. That's interesting. Yeah. We'll see what happens. So We'll see. Um, a rooftop bar is going in. What? Yeah. We... Couldn't see any of that, or we did not see any of that, but I guess we there's didn't. a rooftop bar that's either going in or has already mm -hmm. uh, opened. Uh, we already mentioned, mentioned Soul Shoes, yeah. where we bought our shoes. Hello to the ladies there who yep. helped us out. They were very nice. Uh, and then there's another place called Sweet Evelyn's, and that's a that's a dessert place. I cannot believe you did not find this place. Let me stop. Uh, let me say... Corey Jones, who Food Network fans may remember from the 2022 Christmas Cookie Challenge. I went in. Opened a shop. You went there? I went to Sweet Evelyn's, yes. Did you get the butter bourbon pecan oh, chocolate chip cookie? I didn't because they're under construction. Oh my God. <laughs> they were expanding their kitchen. Oh there was That no... was the place? <laughs> yes. Oh, yes. Lord. That you walked in it what too. A missed opportunity. Remember all the Christmas stuff they had out so I could purchase, yeah. like, I could purchase maple syrup. I could purchase chocolate chips. I There was their bait their no their kitchen was under construction there were no big goods yep uh let me see we already talked about okay so beyond that there are fast food chains and everything those are of no interest but that's between the holiday inn and downtown yeah where we were staying um one thing that i was going to add when we we're talking about going back real quick to lane southern orchard got it um i really missed an opportunity to uh track back to my little redneck roots. Uh, they have a fried bologna sandwich there. And I totally missed it on the menu. How yeah. did you miss that? I think I'm going to get my WT card pulled. I think you are too. I've never had a fried bologna sandwich. So can you like, is it like um, a grilled cheese sandwich where you put butter on the outside and you flip it via bologna on the inside? What is it? It's kind of like uh, you fry the bologna and then you can put cheese on it if you want. 
I'm not a big mayo person either. Again, texture. Uh, so some people like to just do fried bologna with mayo and white bread. Um, oh, you don't fry the bread. The bread doesn't no, go in the pan. No, you don't fry the bread. bread. Oh, so no. it's not no, like a grilled cheese. No, legit, the, the bologna is fried. You can put cheese on it if you want, but you're still I, frying the bologna meat. I'm not talking about cheese. I'm you just fry saying... the meat. You fry the meat. Okay. I don't know how many ways I can say <laughs> you do not fry the bread. Okay. okay. All then right. you put it on the bread. Okay. It's hot meat or and or cheese on the bread. Okay. So is it um, good? Yeah, it's delicious. I mean, come on. It's like <laughs> oh, hamburger man. helper. It sounds disgusting. So okay. awesome. Oh my God, the mac and cheese hamburger helper. No, I'm talking about the fried bologna. Yeah. I'm going back to the fried bologna. I'm going to go bologna. off my nutritionist diet. Um, okay, so moving away from downtown though, we also went past, we did go past this, the Georgia National Fairgrounds. Yeah, we did. It's a big deal. It actually has not been around that long though because... It's uh, what Perry's known for. Did you know that? It is. I knew that. It is, but it's only been around since like 1983 yeah. or something like that. Uh, Rep Representative Larry, this is a funny story. Representative Larry Walker visited the Junior Hog Market show in Macon, Georgia, and was unimpressed. He felt the youth of Georgia deserved better facilities to show their livestock projects. So he and, you know, a bunch of his uh, important friends uh, you know, basically what ensued after those, the meeting with the, of the mines was uh, over a thousand acres of fairgrounds, concessions, and entertainment venues that have hosted acts like The Temptations. Nice. Lee Greenwood. Okay. You don't know who that is. I don't. Country singer is old. Uh, Lady Antebellum, you know who that is. Of course. Is. And your favorite, 98 Degrees. Oh, Nice. <laughs> Nice. It's a good one. That huh? is a great one. So if you and I want to go back, the National Rodeo is on February 21st. I don't think we're going to make that. That's next week. Oh, I would love to go. I yeah. haven't been to a rodeo since I was like 11. Yeah. Um, so I had asked about the fairgrounds because I, I knew that Perry, Georgia was known for the fairgrounds. And I was like, what's happening? And I looked on the calendar. There was not much. So uh, I, you know, we were, when we were there visiting, uh, we, I met somebody and I said, oh, I really wanted to go to the fairgrounds and just kind of, you know, was hoping there was something happening. And he said, there is something happening. And I said, what is it? He said, they're doing a pig thing. What is that? Like where the hog, what is it? Oh, they like where they're just selling the hogs? Yes. And he said- An it's, auction. Yes, the hog auction. And I said- <laughs> The hog auction. I said, well, that's what it's called, right? What is it called? <laughs> Just it's the auction, okay, the so, farmer's auction or something. So then I was like, oh, I don't... He goes, you should go. It's so much fun. I was like, I like piggies. I don't want to see them uh, be an auction off to slaughter. I just can't. So yeah. I didn't go. Pigs are we, smart, they say. They know they're getting... Dolphins, yeah, Please pigs. stop. I know, I can't. They've already ruined peaches for me, right? Okay, sorry. Yeah. Uh -huh. uh, but in March, we can go to the Pecan Growers Association. That's, it. That's at the fairgrounds. What would uh, that entail, I wonder? Um, I don't know. I mean, I guess it's just a bunch of pecan farmers getting together and maybe maybe it's a market like, of some sort they, or an auction. I wonder if there's a difference. Like if the pecans are grown here, they taste sweeter than if they're grown here. Or they're more like they're bigger. I don't know. I, I bet it has something to do with the soil. And in different climates, the pecans are different. I, I'd have to talk to the pecan farmer. You would. Uh, what sounds more up your alley, though, is Av Avril Lavigne is coming in June. To the fair? Yeah. Oh, I would fairground. go see her. I know you oh would. Oh my gosh, that would be so much fun. <laughs> yeah. So anyway, uh, the one thing I, that I wanted to mention is, and I feel like there is a sort of big influx of people coming in. The city issues, on average, 40 single-family home building permits a month now. Whoa. 40 permits a month. Can you believe that? So I think you're going to be seeing a lot more of your South Carolinian uh, developments popping up around Perry. I was just going to say, I actually can't believe it. And I'll tell you why. There are no housing developments there. No, there So aren't. where are these 40 permits per month they going? They must be partitioning land off from, I don't know, maybe the farms are yielding. So I highly doubt it. All these farms seem super, super profitable. So You know what's weird too is that when, um, you know, speaking about property and real estate, um, we drove around quite a bit and there's lots of property in Perry. I mean, yeah. you can buy a piece of property and build your dream home there, and it's going to be under $600,000 for sure. Um, it just wasn't aesthetically pretty. Like, that's the only, that's like, there wasn't like, I mean, it was just like, it's you know super be, flat. It's it, a lot of fields. It is a lot. That's the thing. I'm it's like, it's not the mountainous region of Georgia. 
it's not just that. I'm talking also about like, um, you could drive. I know this is going to contradict like what we're looking for, but you would see like one little tiny house, right? And then you wouldn't see anything for like a mile, which you would think we would love, but it's just, it seems scattered. That's the only word I can think of. Like the housing, it seems scattered and it's not all, I want to, I don't know what the proper word is. Congruent? Like, I don't know if that's the proper word. Like it's just, everything is so, it's a mishmash. That's the word. It okay. is a true mishmash, I feel. Maybe and so it, it doesn't lend itself to a pretty aesthetic for the outline area of that charming downtown. So that was really disappointing. We left that charming downtown area and I personally couldn't wait to see what was on the outline areas because to me, that really tells you about a town. It's not the downtown because the downtowns are like for tourists, people who are driving through, people who are visiting. The downtown doesn't say, okay, a downtown, let me rephrase that. A certain downtowns can dictate how the area is going to be. And we've been to, we've been to downtown areas where like it just is sketchy, run down. We're like, okay, we're not staying here. But also yeah. we've been to downtowns where they're really just for tourists. And then when you go to the outline area, it does not reflect that downtown. So I couldn't wait after seeing the downtown of Perry to see what the outline areas were. And that was what was disappointing. Uh, yeah, I guess it's a little scattered. There weren't a ton of like you expected more sort of stately homes I did. than there were. Yes, because yeah. the downtown was so charming. So yes, that's exactly what I expected. Mm. Or or just like, it could, didn't have to be stately. It could be a, a really just like nice a, ranch home. You were looking for charming ranch homes. Or kind, yeah, houses, like yeah. that like was on acres and acres. And that oh, yeah. wasn't always the case. It was weird. No, we saw, we saw acres and acres, but we would see little tiny houses on those or, acres or... Or like, like rundown you, properties. Rundown properties. You yeah. would see a big home on a rundown property. Like yeah. it would be odd. So it just, it didn't kind of match the downtown feel I felt, which um, I kept saying to you, where do we go where we see like a better aesthetic? And we were, we were literally chasing that and we couldn't find it. No, we couldn't. I mean, a lot of people said, oh, go check out Marshallville. And we did. And it also had a very sort of old downtown where you could tell there was some renovations and, and stuff happening. Not to the degree, in my view, of Perry, but it was nice. It was fine. Uh, and then a lot of people said, oh, check out Warner Robins. Yes. That's where you want to go. But we drove that strip through Warner wow. Robins and it was just uh, we even went on side tons streets. Tons and tons of strip malls. It was tons and tons of, you know, chain restaurants. Uh, and it's a so Robbins Air Force is right there, which is partially why, you know, it's named Warner Robbins. Um, a lot of those check cashing places and all that. Were you, that you surprised see. by like the fact that we couldn't find what we were looking for outside of Perry? I mean, were you at all surprised? I guess I was a little bit because it just seemed like the interior of the downtown had so much charm and everything. I understand farms are farms and they're yeah. going to be acres and acres of trees and it, orchards that's not what we were and, and all that that's other stuff. That's not that. No, we weren't always seeing that. No. When, uh, in the places where there were sort of clusters of houses or whatever, they were pretty run down. I think those are probably, you know, those are farm hands living there. And so. Okay. That makes sense like, then. You know. Yeah. They're, they're not going to be doing siding on the weekend when they've been out in the fields all day. So all week. So, um, you know, uh, and then I, I don't know. Warner Robins to me was, I mean, there were some developments there that were fine and everything. You and I don't want to live in a subdivision. So that place was out. Uh, I just, you know, again, I'm taken back to sort of what you see in so many military towns uh, are check cashing places, pawn shops, all that other stuff to, to the degree where, like, you know, Congress I think it was, I don't know, it was in the mid-aughts or something. They actually had to pass a law capping the percentage that these check or payday loan yeah. places could um, impose upon military members. Mm -hmm. But you know, it's 36%. So it's legit one third of their income. And think about what the average private or corporal or non-commissioned officer or non-commissioned you know, uh, service member makes uh, so, and oh, then take a terrible. third of that away. That is just terrible. And it's like, it's a shame. It's a shame. They always have them in poor places. Always in poor places. They do. So anyway, uh, to me, Warner Robbins really rang of that. And, uh, 
you know, for that reason, I was kind of like, yeah, no, Perry's better. <laughs> like, even if, uh, even, you know, you, you would be well served. I mean, maybe one of the reasons why they're, they're offering so many building per, per building permits for houses is because they really want, you know, the kind of thing that you're looking for. Sounds to me like divisions or subdivisions are going to be flying up everywhere, but uh, who am I to say? A lot of people, you and I have found, we're kind of in the minority when yeah. it comes to plan communities, w- whether wanting to live in a planned community or not. We've, we are in the minority. We say we no, don't. and yet there are millions of people in this country that are saying yes. Yeah, so. it's true. So that's it. So that's all I got. Those are your stats. I'm Perry, Georgia. So could you live there? I think I could, actually. Um, I like the fact on, on par, as you mentioned earlier about Laurel, Like I like the fact that there were some wealthy families there, just like Laurel, who insisted upon some sort of downtown culture and a bustling sort of at least community in the town center. Uh, it feels like, you know, if these families, like you said, have been, or like your lady friend said, uh, have been propping up this place for so long and it's finally starting to pay off for them, I think that's a great thing. And I like the fact that, you know. Community pride. Yeah, I mean, it's it's close to Macon. It's not too far from Atlanta, you know. What is it, two hours from Atlanta? I think it's like two. So to paint the picture for everyone, Perry, Georgia is right basically in the middle of the state of Georgia, two hours roughly south of Atlanta. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. So, um, you know, I don't know. Could you live there? No. No? There's not. Not enough happening. There's just not. And and the closest airport is what? Uh, I would say it's either Atlanta or, Col- uh, no, Columbus, Georgia is probably just as far. Maybe Columbus, Georgia. Macon. The closest airport would probably be Macon. Yeah. So I don't know. I mean, um, I wanted to say yes because I really like that downtown area. But when we started looking at homes and started looking at the outlying area, I just felt like it was too desolate, too it's much. It's a little of a- agrarian for you. Oh, that's a big word. Yeah, what is that? It, is. it means farms. Okay. It's a lot. It's like you like the idea of farms and having farms nearby, but you don't want to live in the center of miles and miles of farms. That is true. That's you. Yeah, you know me pretty well. Yeah. Yeah, so I'm out. Yeah. I, on the other hand, could live in a silo, so I'm fine. Um, I liked it. I liked the downtown. I liked the promising, uh, you know, sort of um, aspects of, this, of the little town. I thought it was a great town. I did, too. I did, too. I just, I can't. You like it a lot, but you couldn't live there. Nope. <laughs> they got that right. Yeah. I liked it a lot, but I just couldn't live there. And that has been the case with some cities we've been to. Yeah. And this uh, for, this was just one of them, but doesn't mean I won't go back to visit. And if you are traveling through Georgia, I highly uh, recommend you stopping at Perry, having a meal, uh, buy yourself a pair of $200 shoes, and call it a day. Yeah, Don't call it a day. Then continue south, and you can either go to the Lion's Den Adult Superstore <laughs> because there are signs and signs and signs up and down the 75 floor, or you can find a house of worship and go get with Jesus. You have a choice. You can maybe do both, but oh my there's a certain order you should probably do that in. So if, you go, to the, if you go to the Lions mega store, you were sleeping while I was driving. I was like, oh my God, they're really pumping. Like they're really pushing okay, this Lions on. Den adult mega superstore. I'm like, <laughs> And I found out why. Oh my gosh, what is it? It's truckers. Like they attract truckers. How many? Okay, okay. Explain to everyone who is listening. One side of the freeway has Jesus signs. So the north yeah. side has Jesus signs, and the south side has. Um, a, how uh, no, does it work? I, it was a little bit of a cluster of both. Uh, like each side, each direction, <laughs> you're gonna hit them. So. So it was like. I mean, they're both vying for your attention. So you feel, you do feel like I can tell you as a man, I'm oh, pulled in two different directions. Were you? You had yeah. the little devil on one shoulder I and the angel did. on the other. <laughs> it's a good thing I had you with me. We oh. would not know how that oh. day could have ended up. Well, I am glad I was there too. <laughs> Yep. I could have been seduced. That's all I'm saying. <laughs> <laughs> so anyway, um, yeah, so don't, so don't just stop in Perry. Or maybe go to Lion's Den first, find some Jesus, then go to Perry. I don't know. You're going to have to figure out your own order and what works for you. 
<laughs> oh, that's great. Okay, uh, yeah. Is it is it is it Lion's Den or Jesus? Jesus or Lion's Den? Yeah, I don't know. You'll, you exactly. <laughs> All right, so, but before you do any of that, I want you to check out our Instagram. We're gonna have a quiz about today's episode. So if you listened and you think you know some facts about Perry, Georgia, and you wanna partake, uh, check out the quiz on our Instagram. Uh, there's gonna Which be- Which is what, at Skip Town All Stars Travel Podcast, yep, right? On exactly. Instagram. Yeah, it's at Skip Town All Stars Travel Podcast. And, uh, and, and check your knowledge on all things Perry, Georgia. All right, and if you get it right, do, are we giving anything away? No, we're not giving oh, anything away. we're not there away. yet? No, not there yet, no. babe. No. Are we giving away peach t-shirts or something? Uh, <laughs> we'll give you a can of peaches from Lane's Orchard. <laughs> <laughs> Don't promise something you cannot deliver, okay? I know. We're so easy, too. It's like everybody's going to get it right, and then we're going to spend like hundreds of dollars shipping cans of there peaches. There are no gifts. Just go to, the, go to the quiz, enjoy yourself, see if you learned anything from today's episode. I tried. She killed the fun. Sorry. That's what I'm here for. <laughs> that's what I do. All right. You got anything else? I do not. All right. Time to wrap this one up. See you, Perry, Georgia. We enjoyed our stay. Thank you so much for having us. Take them out. Empty nest, full tank. Check the mic and make sure it sound right, boys.